draft here from the Team Draft Super League. And welcome back to coverage here at the Team Draft Super League. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe. Hey, look at that. It looks like we're not in the same place, Ben. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. <laughs> Athena did a good job of just chopping us up into like two small pictures. She did a perfect job. All right, so we're watching Chris Bakula draft here this week. And uh, boy, he opened a nice one here, Ben. Archfiend of Ifnir. What is he thinking about as far as what he's passing? Well, I mean, Archfiend is broken. It's the best run in the pack by a lot, of course. Chris is going to take it. Uh, other notable cards in the pack, I mean... Rutha Sniper is a card I like, but it might be harder to put together a focus deck. Green Trial is a good place to start, especially early. Bear with the side, you know, very solid common. Frost Walker, you know, second best common in my opinion behind Magma Spray. Uh, almost, you know, a really powerful common. Um, that's pretty much it. Thresher Lizard's okay. So the person, and, and Warrior's okay. So the person that Chris is passing to... Chris should assume they're most likely going to take Gus Walker. I think it's a pretty clear best card in this pack after the Archfiend. And uh, if they don't, then, you know, there's Trial, uh, Sniper, you know, Binding Mummy. Of course, Chris also wants to think about, you know, what his, what his teammate might get, you know, two seats down, and it's those same cards. So, I mean, you know, there's a lot to keep track of. Um, Gus Walker being the, the most, like, loud card that he's passed. Yes, right? Gus Walker being by far the second best card in this pack, though, in my opinion. All right, and by the way, you can take a look here on your on the left-hand side of your screen and see the table set up here. So it looks like Bakula is passing to Atron, who's passing to Jamie Park. Yes, that's exactly right. Cool. So here's another pretty clear, easy pick. Mm -hmm. Angler Drake is a really good uncommon. Uh, this is a pretty weak pack. This really is, isn't it? What's the next best card here? Yeah, this Seeker of Insight is decent. I mean, this pack is really wow, bad. Wow, this is a bad pack, especially by comparison. Yeah. So, I mean, Chris is really going to have no idea what Atron's going to take out of this pack. Because, I mean, there's, you know, Seeker of Insight, Wandering Death, um, Consuming Fervor is a card I actually like a decent amount and really focused, really aggressive red decks. But, I mean, this is a, this pack has nothing that's going to cement uh, Atron into anything. Uh -huh. And, really, Chris is just not going to know. But uh, so Chris is going to take the Angler because it's a great card out of a pack with no other great cards. So that's that's a clear, easy pick. Of course, we all agree with that. And probably just have to, you know, pretty much ignore the rest, like ignore this pack. You know what I mean? There's a Seeker somewhere. This just somewhere doesn't count. This is not a data point worth Yeah, noting. there's a Seeker somewhere upstream. There's a Ooh. Wander and Death somewhere upstream. Dust to Dawn here, third pick. This is going to be the first interesting pick we see in this Yeah, pack. because remember, we were thinking that the, the most obvious card from pack one uh, was, was Gust Walker. Right. So do you want to pass uh, Dusk and Dawn to somebody you also passed a Gust Walker to? Now, Dusk, Dusk Dawn isn't broken, but it's a good card. Good card. Yeah. And uh, there's Defiant Great Maw. Good card, not as good as uh, Dusk Dawn, I would say. Um, Essence Scatter is a solid common. Entangler is a solid common. Seeker and Binding Mummy, we've already talked about. Very solid common. So there's a lot of close cards in this pack. So, I mean, yeah. I you know, mean, Ben, it's interesting because we were talking about this. There are two good white cards here, Dusted On and Binding Mummy. There's also a decent card for Chris with either uh, Seeker of Insight. There's also an Essence Scatter up there as well. Is this one of those situations where he should be looking to go ahead and pass a white card? Or does he need to cut one of these? Well, Chris doesn't really have colors yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I were Like Chris, he might just play it? Yeah, like if I were Chris... I would probably take the dust on, especially if you pass the second binding mummy. Maybe you maybe you solidify um, Atron into zombies somehow or something. I mean, I guess that's not going to be the case because Atron's not going to have taken the uh, binding mummy over the Gust Walker. But nonetheless, if they go uh, Gust Walker binding mummy, yeah, and now you're cutting white, that's a good situation. Now, ironically, Chris did take the white card. He took Binding Mummy. So I, I guess Chris just values Binding Mummy higher than Dust on. Maybe that's a card that me and you both like and, you know, Pakula's not a fan of. Sure. You know? It looks like he's got a Splendid Agony here, with, which is both uh, paired up with his best card in black and also looks to be the best card in the pack, too. Right. This is not an interesting pick. Yeah. Uh, when the best card in the pack is uh, the same color as your Broken Rare and uh, the pa you're not even passing anything that you care about, like what is what is uh, Chris sending upstream here? A uh, evolving wild procession. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> he can I mean, live with that. Yeah, yeah, that's a clear easy pick. All right, let's take a look at this next pack. I see 
a bunch of decent blue cards in Avon Initiate. There's a Hecma Sentinels and a Hieroglyphic Illumination in the middle there. Yeah, so I mean, I think this is another pretty easy pick. I, I would take the Avon Initiate. Oh, okay. I like Avon Initiate a lot. I think it's the best card in this pack. And it's, you know, Angler Drake is, you know, I mean, you're black. I mean, you're not solidifying anything, but you have two good black cards, one broken rare, and then your next best card is Angler Drake. It's a lot better than a, than a Binding Mummy. Uh, the, Can you rank the the blue cards for us? I, I think Floodwaters is last, but how do you how do you rank the three? Probably the Initiate first, the Sentinel second, the the uh, Cycle Draw card. I don't know what it's called. Hieroglyphic Illumination. The, yeah, the one it looks like Chris might be taking. Uh, now I will grant Chris does have uh, Arch Archfiend, so yeah. he wants to take Cyclers higher. Uh, but team draft decks tend to be even sloppier than eight man ones, and even Initiate is just a nice card in a sloppy draft deck, especially. So I would have took the Initiate. I, I get. I get taking the cycling card with your arch fiend and all of that, but blue and black especially both have plenty of cyclers. So I, I would personally take the avian initiate, but I don't think that's a big deal or anything. Looks like he's going to take an essence scatter over a second copy of hieroglyphic illumination here, and once again, passing not a ton. Right. I mean, the only thing that you're passing on this pack that you even really notice are red cartouche and evolving wilds. I mean, these packs have not been good. I like this pick. I would take Scatter also, but like you said, it's not really over anything, so of course. Interesting. Another Binding Mummy, and Chris immediately selects it. You know, looking at the rest of the pack, sure, there's a Pitiless Vizier that maybe he could play, especially if he ends up being a little more towards the blue-black cycling end of the spectrum, but he's not giving up well, much here. No, I would take the Binding Mummy out of this pack, too. Yeah. You know you likely have a white player in Atron. Not definitely, but likely. But I feel like Chris is just grabbing these Binding Mummies, maybe because he's still shell-shocked by that broken zombie deck that Paul Chian got <laughs> oh, when right. you guys drafted them. Oh, that's what it is. I mean, hating Binding Mummy or drafting Binding Mummy third over Dust on. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe Chris is just having, you know, like, maybe he's just still experiencing that loss. <laughs> still you know? recovering. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, man. I agree with that second Binding Mummy, even though I didn't like the first one, because, I mean, it's you don't want to pass a broken zombie deck, and uh, there's nothing much in that pack. I mean, what could go wrong by passing a broken zombie deck, right? No, nah, nothing. I mean, you lose to the coverage guys. <laughs> <laughs> team, oh, we loved it too, man. Team old school Pro Tour top haters loses to the coverage to guys. The co to happens. the never played on the PT for two of the three members of the team. So it looks like Chris has learned his lesson, uh, whether or not he's executing properly. <laughs> Just the savagest. Yeah, so of course these uh, these picks don't really matter. Like these are moderate playables to unplayables at the end of the pack. Right. So we do see though that while Chris, we kind of assume was hate drafting the two binding mummies, he did end up with two of those in a mighty leap. Uh, is there any competition here for any of the other two colors or are we likely to just see Chris in blue black? No, Chris could go any two of these three colors for sure. Okay. I mean, you know, how many playables, of course his black is better than his white, but like, the Dissenter is barely playable. I mean, if you're not black, green, and putting counters on, it's not even a good card. And the Archfiend was first pick, so Chris doesn't even know if he's going to see black cards in pack three. Yeah, the only thing that he really got was that Splendid Agony, which was third or fourth. And black is really deep at common. Its commons aren't very good, but it has five or six black commons that are, like, always make your deck. So a fourth pick Splendid Agony tells you almost nothing. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's take a look at the pack two pick one. We're going back the other direction here. This one is going to be passed to Rich Hohen. Now... We've got a couple of minutes here while Chris decides what he wants to do. Before we talk about this pack, I do want to know, do you have a feel for what Rich Hohen may be drafting? I mean, that's the person we have the most information on here. Right. Uh, so so this is the person that was passing to Chris in pack mm -hmm. one. So we know that we didn't see a single red card or green card, right? I mean, both of those colors, red especially, red is very deep. So, I mean, I think Chris should be operating under the assumption that Hohen is very likely red. Now look, sometimes Yelger and Finkel are both red and Hohen isn't. But if you're in Chris's seat, you gotta go with the data you saw, which is red is deep, red is the best color in the set, probably, and he saw no red cards, you know? So I don't wanna pass any good red cards to Rich. All right, so let's take a look at this pack. One of the good cards in the pack is a Blood Rage Brawler. Yeah, but this is out of a pack with a bunch of decent cards. Uh -huh. I mean, the, the Prepare to Fight card is broken. Now, not that easy for someone to be green and white, but broken if you can play both halves of it. Mm -hmm. Blood Rage Brawler is a good card, but it's not an excitingly good card. Because uh -huh. it looks like he wants to take the Shimmer Scale Drake for his own deck. So, I mean, if, if Chris were to hate Blood Rage Brawler in a color that he's 0% to get to play the, the Blood Rage, overtaking the Drake, 
Hone's still going to get a card second pick, and the card is not going to be that much worse than the Blood Rage. So that's not a spot I would have hated. I, I would have done the same thing as Chris and took that Shimmer Skill Drake. Here's an interesting one, too. There's a Ruthless Sniper, a Cursed Minotaur, and an Electrify in the back. So this is a more interesting spot, because more than likely Hone can't use the, the Ruthless Sniper. So if Chris were to hate the Electrify, then Hone would likely not get much. But the thing is, we don't really know what Hoenn's second color is, even if it's red. And Chris is looking to draft blue-black cycling here. He's got the Arch Fiend. Now he picks up a Sniper early. He's got a few cycling cards. And blue and black are the colors of cycling, basically. Mm -hmm. So I like that pick also. Okay. I, I would draft these two picks the same as Chris. I don't see any reason to hate overtaking cards that are as good, if not better, for my deck. And aren't really going to prevent Rich from getting anything. Ooh, look at this one. The Trial of Ambition and a final reward in this pack if he wants to stay in black. I like that. Yeah, so this is a, he should stay in black and he should take a card for himself. There's no hating here. So um, this is just a question of which one do you value higher? Right. This is like a, a close pick in an eight-man draft. You know, with, with a pack and a half left, a pack and three quarters left. You know, how many card do you need to get for Trial to be better than final reward? Probably two. Yeah, I think if you get zero, then the final reward's clearly better. Yeah especially in team draft where the decks are less focused and you know you have this deck full of little stuff and cycling like blue black does and you really need to deal with big bombs and big threats so i think that's a close pick i think i would have took the final reward to be honest but if you took the black trial i could certainly see that being defended yeah it is still relatively early with most of pack two to go and all of pack three for him to pick right. up a cartouche or two but yeah he went with the safer pick with the final reward and also though the blue and black cartouche are not things you necessarily want to have to prioritize that highly in this deck because you're not really a creature deck when you're blue-black cycling. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, so blue cartouche is pretty weak, and black cartouche are always going to play, but it's still powered down from where it would be in, like, a black-green creature yeah, deck Yeah, absolutely. Something. I mean, he's on he's on five creatures right now. Right, which is good. This deck doesn't yeah. want a ton of creatures. Right. But it just means you also don't want to have to aggressively draft blue and black cartouches. So I like what Chris has done in pack two. I mean, I like what Chris has done for most of the draft. Uh, you know, I'm with you on Dust Dawn over Binding Mummy third, and... Uh, I don't know if there was too many other picks. I really disagreed with Chris. Oh, and the Aven Initiate. I would have took the Aven Initiate over the higher good Illumination. Pretty much everything else, I, I think, has been rock solid. Look at Seeker of Insight, and there's also an Aven Initiate here. Uh, I would take Seeker here. You like Seeker. Yeah, when you're a blue-black spell cycling. So yeah. well with this deck, yeah. Right, like, Chris is going to be looking to prioritize spells. He needs early blockers. He's a control deck. Uh, I felt like Aven Initiate offered more than draw two, you know, or just cycle for one, but not more than Seeker. I think Seeker is one of the key commons for this archetype. And um, Chris agrees with you. And as we go through these packs, Chris, Chris has a really unexciting seat. You know, like, yeah, he hasn't really had an opportunity to really take much here outside of the stuff for his deck. Right. right. Like when I drafted that crazy draft on on, uh, on TDSL, you know, I kept seeing cards in other colors that were better than the cards in my colors. Yeah. Chris is seeing blue and black cards that fit his deck. He's not passing great cards. Yet. No. You know, the best card he passes is like an Electrify. Right. Like, if there was like a Gust Walker in this pack and then also a moderate white playable, then you're like, oh, do I take the Sentinels from my deck or do I hate the Gust Walker? But then the person still gets this other moderate white. But all Chris is really seeing is these okay blue and black cards for his deck. So I think this has been, I hate to say it, but kind of a boring pack. Sure. But Chris has drafted correctly. He's hey, taking the best cards. You got to keep it real, right, Ben? Yeah. Um, he, he doesn't pull punches. In I'll case you, you were that. wondering, uh, Wizards is not stacking these packs to make TDSL more exciting. This, these are <laughs> randomly generated packs, random legit packs from Magic Online. And yeah, I, I like how Chris is drafting this draft. Uh, I, I think if I were drafting this draft, I would also be blue black in Chris's seat. I think I would have, only, those are the only two picks that I would really have done differently. And they don't change anything. I would just have a dust on my sideboard and whoever would have a binding mummy. Mm -hmm. And I would have one initiate instead of the, the one draw two, you know? Here's an interesting pick that changes with what Chris is drafting. Normally, the Cartouche of Knowledge would be the card that would kind of jump out. But, you know, there there is a Scarab Feast over there for a cheap cycler, an Unburden. Yeah, I think uh, now that Chris already has multiple cycling cards, I think the one mana cycler is a totally reasonable pick. Uh, team draft may be slow enough that Unburden becomes better. I'm not really sure. I would take the blue Cartouche. Definitely not. Like, if you look at Chris's deck, what is he going to put a blue cartouche on? Exactly, but it's crazy, right? Because if you're used to just drafting, you know, if you just take this in a vacuum, the blue cartouche jumps out at you, but you have to make such a big different right. change here for what you're and doing. And I'm not saying blue cartouche is unplayable. Chris has a couple of decent targets for it. Maybe he gets a couple more, maybe he doesn't. But I think Chris should be focused on the cycling, and I don't think Chris is worried about sending that blue cartouche over to Rich. I think there's no shot Rich can be blue, basically, the way that this draft has gone. I mean, all Chris saw all Chris saw the end of pack one were, was blue, basically. That's yeah. the only color Chris was seeing. So we finally see a pack that really doesn't have much for Chris. The third Floodwaters, pretty low value. The uh, Trespasser's Curse, you know, sideboard card at best. And the Honed Kopesh, not what he's looking to do here. 
Is there any argument to taking like a bloodlust insider or a brute strength? So, yeah, so there would be. The problem is they're both there. They're just, you're not really taking anything of consequence. They're, right. they're, they're going to get the other one. Let's say those cards are like a four and a half, a five, somewhere like playable yeah. but not good. If uh -huh. you hate one and they get the other, like you're not accomplishing anything. Yeah. And maybe uh, your teammate Finkel is red and then you're actually hating from them. Mm -hmm. And there's a higher chance I would think that Finkel is red than blue given all the late blue Chris saw. So I, I don't think you really want to be uh, taking one of two red cards in that spot. Interesting choice here. Chris uh, went right for the River Serpent as a yes. chief cycler. And then he went back to the Vizier. And now he's back on the Serpent. I like the Serpent here. I don't yeah. even think it's that close. I, I don't think the 4-2 is that good. I think it's okay. You can play it. River Serpent is a nice win condition and a nice cycler. Yep. River Serpent is a card that this deck wants. Bunch of mediocre cards left in the pack, so he's going to take the one that's in his color. Also, uh, while we were chatting there, he did pick up a new Perspectives. Okay. You could just go off. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard to go off with that card because even <laughs> yeah. if you draw three, that you was more a joke seven. than yeah, anything. Yeah. But uh, but I do think that it's a card you might play. Yeah, that, that that's the thing. As this pack winds down, I wanted to highlight and, and get your thoughts on Ben. Where, you know, when you think about quality of decks, right? So, uh, you know, your your eight person draft is sort of the gold standard. The team team sealed, maybe even a little better. Right? Oh yeah, I think team gap. sealed decks are considerably better than eight man drafts. Okay, so that so time. team sealed is our number one, then regular booster draft, maybe sealed decks after that, and then yeah, this is that is that the order you put it in? By yeah. the way, there's a Samut there. Yeah, now a now gold bomb. Yeah, now Chris should probably do some hating um, because there's a Magma Spray a team worthy of some. And the only things for him are a trial when he has no cartouches or an even initiate. These are totally replaceable cards. Now, the only problem is that the there's a Deemworthy, a Samut, and a Magma Spray. So all the good cards are in the same color. So hating is not very effective, as mm -hmm. we were talking about. So I'm not actually sure what I would do if I were Chris. And I don't think Chris is sure. I think Chris is looking this over going, wow, I don't want the opponents to have Deemworthy and Samut. But I can't stop them from getting all of these, right? So, I mean, this is like, you really have to think like, you know, what do you think, you know, Jamie Park is playing two seats down? What do you think Atron is playing? Because remember, Atron saw no red from you either. So, you know, if I were Chris, I think I would hate Samut. I think Samut is enough more broken than the rest of this pack. That, And I think there's a higher chance that Atron could be like a green, white and splash it or even a, a green, red, maybe or something. So, and I mean, I'm not that, I'm not nearly as scared as uh, at a removal spell like Deemworthy. It's a good card, but if the decks are sloppy, let's, Samut could just be unbeatable. Yes. You know what I mean? The card's insane. And if and given there's three good red cards, if this pack had a really good card for Chris, I would, like, worse than Samut, but a good card. Like, you know, let me think of an example. Like, maybe Final Reward, I think this would be a tough pick. But I think a Black Trial, now that the Cartouche ship, cartouche ship has sailed, is not worth taking at the risk of passing a Broken Rare like Samut. It's just too risky. Yeah. I think that you pass two red removal, so your teammate gets one. If, uh, if Atron is red and you cut the Samut because I don't think you want to send that thing up. I don't think you want to pass it. I don't think yeah. you want. I don't think you want to take the risk that that goes in Atron's deck. But to be honest, this is an interesting draft because with how weak Pack One was, I don't know what Atron is playing. Yeah. You know, like more often than not, when I do a team draft, I have a good idea of what the person I'm passing to is playing. I'm not always right. Nobody is. But I would often say like I think there's an 80% chance they're playing this color and a 60% chance this is their second color. I have no idea what Etron is playing. <laughs> Chris barely passed playables in yeah, that one. Yeah, he really did. Yeah, white was the only thing that we had any idea on, and he didn't pass much. Wow, cut to ribbons. What did Chris here end up well. taking? I looked away. Uh, he took the Samut. Okay, great, great. Yeah, that's just too broken of a card to pass. You don't want your whole team to lose to that Samut. Here's an interesting spot here. There's a Cryptic Serpent. Oh, it's not an interesting spot. Okay, so so break it down. What do you like? There's a cut to ribbons and a Cryptic Serpent. Cut to ribbons. You're just snapping it it's off. It's one of the best cards in the set. Like. Well, I'm not passing that to, to take a, a Cryptic Serpent that I'll probably table. And if, and if I don't table the Cryptic Serpent, then there's a, a Drake anyway. Yeah, it's just getting interesting because, like, he's passing quite a few good red cards here. There's no good red cards in this pack. No, 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 no not in this one. He just he just passed another. Oh, yeah. So he just sure. has to now, like, make yeah. sure that it stemmed the bleeding on This is an easy pick. The last pick was more interesting because it was the Deem Worthy anyway. This yep. pick, you definitely take Cut Ribbons. If anybody on your team would have passed this Cut Ribbons, that should be the last team draft you do with that person. <laughs> it's one of the best cards in the set. So, so wait a minute. So why is Chris looking at it? Well, Chris looking at what? Why was he looking at Cut to Ribbons? That was the second pick. Somebody else could have taken it, too. Well, I don't know what they got, and I don't know what they think Chris is. I mean, it's Rich passing to Chris. Maybe uh, he just believes Chris uh, can't be red because he passes zero red cards. 
and that he could get it through or that force Chris to, right, to, to hate it. And that's important because in the case of cut ribbons, it's so splashable that that's dangerous. And if Rich didn't get like a white trial or something really good, I probably won't like Rich's pick. But Rich knows he passes zero red cards pack one. Uh-huh. So Chris cannot be red. Gotcha. So that's a reason you can pass cut ribbons. Now, while Chris didn't pass many red cards either, that logic only goes so far. And he did just pass a red card. And cut ribbons is pretty splashable. And he's not getting anything great. Yeah. There was nothing great in that pack. Yeah. If Chris, Chris uh, can say might might not be red, but what is Chris getting? Chris didn't get a white trial. Chris, Chris didn't get an angler drake. Chris would have been taking uh, something mediocre at best, cryptic serpent or whatever, overcut ribbons. Mm-hmm. So let's catch back up. What did uh what did Chris take? He, he took just a took a picks. gale strike out of that last one. Okay, that's a good and he also back. picked up a second copy of Essence Scatter and the okay. pick prior to that. Nice. Okay, and so and now, now he's looking at the Wasteland Scorpion, which is, I think he's just getting a little concerned about his cycling count at this point. And his curve. If you look, he doesn't have mm-hmm. that many three drops or two yep. drops. I think uh, the River Serpent would probably be better than the, the Scorpion for the Oof. cycling deck in general. Magma Spray. Yeah, but I think in Chris's case, he needed to take the Scorpion. I think that was a good pick. You got to think about your curve. Uh, yeah, and this is an easy hate out of Magma Spray. It's the only good card in the pack. I mean, there's a few moderate playables. And I think that's what we're seeing here. I think Rich is under the impression that I didn't pass any red. Chris probably isn't red. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And he's correct. Yeah, I mean, we'll get to take a look at the draft viewer. That's that's the beauty of these two. And, uh, and you know, we get to do that, and we actually get to pick who we want to see. So keep that in mind as you go through. If we want to, if we want to watch Rich, I mean, he was sitting right next to Chris, but yeah. And there's the cryptic serpent back. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I don't know. I don't know who we want to see. Uh, I'm down to watch whoever, but. One of the things I hate about team draft is it's like, oh, what did you pass? Okay, but what did you get? Okay, but what else was in the pack? Mm-hmm. But here, the beauty of these online TDSL drafts, the whole draft viewer is there. I know. You can look at every single pick people faced in order it. they picked them. Me <laughs> I, I love doing it, yeah. I love this. The fact that there's covered uh, team drafts with the draft viewer available is wonderful. So here we can see why it was a clear hate, though. Cryptic Serpent, of course, comes back in a six-person yep. draft. And he's going to get that back. Yeah, Chris I mean, is sitting on 24 playables at the moment. I love to be harsh, good. but I, I feel like this was one of those drafts where, you know, it was kind of an easy seat. I agree with the vast majority of what Chris did. I think Chris drafted the seat well, but I think it was a really straightforward easy seat. Okay. But, you know, he hated – He look, he didn't open great. In pack three, those could have been great blue and black cards. Instead, he went some new cut ribbons, yep. you know, and those picks are right. You know, you don't send cards like that to the other team. And uh, Chris drafted a deck. He has a nice blue black cycling deck. It has a good curve. It has enough cyclers, multiple essence scatters. It's not a great deck, but these packs have been really weak. Yeah, this one doesn't have much for him. Supernatural stamina is certainly not the type of card he wants for this deck. No, uh, Chris would never play stamina, so I would probably go out and hate consuming fervor here. But also, Chris may not even like that card. Yeah. I personally think in aggressive red black decks and red white decks with like 16, 17 creatures, it's just an actively good card. Yeah, I, I have uh, certainly changed my tune on that as well. I, upon initially seeing it, I thought, no, but then after having lost to it in a reasonable number of times, I thought that thing actually has a home. So the trick with that card is you don't play it the first time you can to start dealing damage. You play it the, at the latest possible time. Yes. So because then the game ends before the drawback really takes effect. And so you kind of use it as like a sorcery speed combat trick that sticks around and builds a giant fatty out of a creature that was blanked anyway. Yep, exactly. It turns one of your creatures that is no longer good into now something that's a threat. Right, like like your 2-2 wasn't doing anything anymore now it's turn 5 or 6. Suddenly you got a 5-5 five, five haste, basically. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Merciless Javelinier wield. Chris was looking at it originally. He doesn't have any way to splash currently, well, though so, he would like that card so in his deck. So one Evolving Wilds or something would be huge for Chris, and of course he's not going to get one. Yeah. But the cycling deck has more ability to splash than other decks. The cards cycle for colorless, and you go deep into your decks, and Seeker loots. So I could easily see with a card as good as Cut Ribbons, Chris uh, splashing for that. Playing something like two Mountains, three Mountains, and then just, you know, playing the Cut Ribbons and the Javelin Air. The only thing is the Javelin Air is an aggressive card. Yeah. It's still a good card. If it was blue-black too, Chris would definitely play it. Yep. But it's not a great card in Chris's deck. No, it, it's turned out to be a little slow for that. You know, the best part about it is that the creature can't block. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you know, I think when we first saw it, we thought, well, I'm going to just take over the board with this card. But it hasn't played out quite like that. It actually is a thing where you go, that can't block, that can't block. Exactly. You know, take eight. And they can't. They have to leave up all their blockers. If they only leave up one or two, then they can't block. Yep. And that's So I don't think Javelin is a great card in Chris's deck. No, but it does have those synergies with the discard it's a way that you can at will discard cards and you know he does have a couple of payoffs for 
I mainly just don't. And even though Cut Ribbons might be sort of an aggressive card because Ribbons drains, Cut Ribbons is a great card in any deck. Yeah, that card's Like, that's not fantastic. an aggressive creature that prevents things from blocking. That's an efficient removal spell that then is an X spell to end the game. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> that, That's one of my favorite cards in the set. I think it's so grossly overpowered. Who should we watch? I don't know. What like, do you want to watch? Well, so I'm, I'm curious about Richie because uh, mm. he was sitting close to Chris and he's the one that we have the most questions about. Okay. But also, I mean, John Finkel's at this table. Like, it wouldn't be a bad thing just to see what John was up to. He was also a few seats away kind of on the other end of the table so we can get a, a mm. sense for what's going on there. We're watching Chris Bakula build here, but after that, we're going to get a chance. Yeah, well, to I mean, Chris is going to make so. one cut or something. I mean, this isn't that interesting. Yeah, there's not a whole lot for him to do. Yeah, let's watch Richie draft. Richie's an old school team drafter, a okay. great player, a, lim a guy with a lot of limited success, and he was passing a Chris, and that'll answer some of our questions and kind of be interesting. Okay, so when that comes up, we'll, we'll watch Rich Ho and draft. I am really curious to see what happened there. And, you know, one of the things we'll keep our eye on as we work our way into that is uh, the red, right? Remember, mm -hmm. we saw a lot of good red flow. And like you said, he wasn't passing any red to Chris, so he probably assumed Chris couldn't use it. But that'll be really interesting to see how he navigates that. Because, like, I can tell you guys, you know, from my perspective as a relatively new person to team drafting, having done single-digit team drafts, team drafts in my whole life, where Richie's probably done as many as I've done, uh, in my whole life over the course of like one pro tour night. <laughs> you oh, yeah. know, uh, there were a lot of staying up all night drafting after we busted the pro tour back in the day. Yeah, like I could <laughs> tell you, like if I talked to you, Ben, I could tell you what I thought was going on to the people on my right, m more to my left, but uh, I don't have the confidence level mm. to just be like, I'm just going to pass a magma spray and a cut to ribbons and, a, you know, like, and just hope that I was right. Like yeah. I would just be much more conservative and just be like I just I'm not I just can't live with myself if I pass a well, cut to ribbons and my opponent can actually use it against the me. The trick is by pack three not only mm -hmm. do you know what you passed in pack one but you know what you saw in Yeah pack I mean two. I have a lot of information but like for example it makes me nervous to pass a cut to ribbons like I just feel like I've just cut it in any scenario at this point just because like I'm just not confident enough with my read to just be like yeah he well, probably can't use sometimes it. Sometimes you're like you can be really confident right like like for example let's say in pack two you got past white trial and there's a rare in the pack, right? Mm -hmm. There's no common or uncommon better than white trial, right, for a white player. Mm -hmm. Or for any color, really, yeah. right? So then you know the person passing you isn't white, right? right. And then you match that information, because you don't know, but you you have you very much think they're not white. Then you match that information with what you passed them in pack one. You pass them almost no white cards, right? They passed you a white trial. Then they passed you a, a third or fourth pick fan bear. Like, they're not white. It's yeah. almost 100%, yeah, you know uh -huh. what I mean? Sometimes it's not that clear. You know what I mean? Sometimes you have situations, you know, where you're like, well, I didn't pass much red. There was that one okay red playable and that okay red playable. And I didn't see much red impact too. So maybe the person's red and maybe they're not. You know what I mean? I feel like in this draft, I mean, Hoenn knows that, like, there was no red through him. I don't know whether red stopped with Hoenn or not. Mm -hmm. You know, Hoenn could be heavy red. Finkel could be heavy red. I think if he was the person passing a Hoenn, they could both be. I'm not really sure. But I know I know for a fact Chris saw, like, no red back. Yeah, I mean, did, sure. did we see – maybe there was one entangler. Did we see one entangler? I don't, I don't remember seeing an entangler, no. I think there might have been one earlier. There might not even have been one. So, I mean, it's, it's interesting. And you always have to understand there's only six people in a draft. So the whole, like, I didn't pass any. But once you add in, like, two seats down – Maybe they got that one moderate playable that you weren't even thinking about because it was second pick and there was way better stuff. And then they got two straight red cards before that or whatever. So I think that it's better to err on the side of caution when passing bombs. Okay. Because your reads are never 100%, right? And when it comes to pack three, you really can have different amounts of confidence in what you think people are. Right, because like, you've got so much more information to work with at that point. Right. Like if you didn't pass any white in pack one and then you got past a fan bear in a white trial – that person is not white. They're right. just not white, period, right. right? On the other hand, if you let through, like, you know, one fan bearer second, but there was a better card in the pack, and then, you know, a binding mummy fourth, but there was, you know, maybe it was around the best card in the pack, but there was a splendid agony, and you don't know which they took, and then pack two, you saw a fan bearer, but you didn't see a white trial, you know what I mean? Like, you don't know if they're white or not, mm -hmm. you know? So I think it's important, like with most things in Magic, to not look for always or never, and to really just analyze the situation and think how confident am I in what I think. Yeah, and and we're probably going to get a feel for that after watching Richie because that, that will give us a much better vibe. Now, <clears throat> by the way, one interesting note about Chris's build there, you said he was just going to cut a couple of things. It didn't look like he was interested in splashing the cut to ribbons and the merciless javelin here. It makes sense to me because with zero fixers and cut ribbons being broken in any deck but still better in an aggro deck and javelin being a very aggressive card, 
why do you want to mess up your two color deck? For sure. This? Yeah. Even with all the cycling in there, mm -hmm. you know. I think if you had a single evolving wild, he would do it because that's functionally a tri land. Mm -hmm. But I think with no fixing, I think Chris should definitely be two color blue black. I like what he did. Okay, so that looks like uh, that's what his deck is going to look like. And uh, I mean, how would you grade the deck? You got a chance to see it. It's okay. I mean, it has an arch fiend in it. it. Yeah. Well, you have to grade it relative to what was passed to him and what he passed, mm -hmm. and the packs were really weak. So I mean, I think Chris has a nice deck. You know, the best card he saw this this draft, I mean, he hated Samut, he hated uh, Cut Ribbons, but didn't pass anything too great. Well, you know, there's a Deem Worthy, there's a Dusk Dawn, uh, there's not really that right. much amazing Magma stuff. Spray. He cut the late Magma Spray, though. There's the, the one Magma cut. Spray in the same pack with Deem Worthy. Yep. So, you know, one of those gets taken, presumably, by, uh, who, who was Chris passing to? Atron. But then one of those goes to Chris's teammate, you know? So, I mean, ultimately, I think Chris put together a better deck than he passed. From what we saw, because the packs were really weak. I mean, I really don't even know what Atron's deck is going to look like, to be honest. Okay. I think we can watch the draft here now. Cool. For Atron, so. Are we going to see Atron or Richie? Uh, sorry, for Richie. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would ideally like to see Richie, but whoever would be cool. All right, let's take a look. So here's Rich Owen. And it looks like he opened up Mouth to Feed Angler Drake. Okay. And there's, I guess, a Seeker. There's not really much else. So, yeah. Mouth to Feed and Angler Drake are the, the cards that he picked. Yeah. What, do you, what do you like here? I like Mouth to Feed. Okay. It's cheaper, uh, and they're close in power level. And uh, I'm not a big fan of blue. I'll totally play it if it's a color I'm seeing. I don't mm -hmm. avoid it. But I think Mouth to Feed is... I would take Mouth to Feed. If this was an 8-man in the Pro Tour open this pack, they wouldn't even feel super close to me. I would just take Mouth to Feed. I would, too. And that's what he did. So here's where he gets his, his second pack. And we see that Dust to Dawn. Yeah. That we knew was going to come through. There's one of the Nef Nef crop Entangler. Yeah, there's the Entangler there. that I remember really, That's really. the one that you saw, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But like I said, you know, that's not passing a red. That does end up somewhere, third or fourth pick. And then maybe that person got past another red card or first picked a red card. So you never know if the person you're passing to is red until they've passed you good red cards in pack two and stuff. Right. Which is why I like Chris's hate draft. I'm not sending some mood, you know? Yeah. You just can't get that card through me. I'm just, it's not happening. <laughs> so what are you taking here if, if you're in Richie's seat? Well, you I mean, it picked mouth to feed. There's no really, there's no really good green cards. The fine yeah, green one's fine. fine. I mean, the best card in this pack, I think, is the one Hoenn took. I think maybe the True Heart Duelist, Duelist. or the Dust of Dawn, just depending yeah. on how you value them. Yeah. I think those cards are pretty close. You know, I didn't agree with Chris in taking Mummy over Dusk. I think Dust Dawn is better than Mummy. Yeah. But I think Duelist and Dust Dawn are extremely close. Very close, right? Yeah. So yeah. I, I really wouldn't mind taking either of those. Uh, if I wasn't going to take one of those, I would take the Entangler. I think. Uh, I think I think that uh, red green is good. I think getting good two drops is really important. Uh, so I think I think if it were me, I would take the duelist or the dust on. Um, what did we first pick here? Uh, mouth to feed. Right. So we've got mouth to feed into true heart. Duelist. So then you know you don't you most likely don't want to destroy all big creatures if you're green white. Not as much as if you were say white black. Yeah. So I could definitely see taking the duelist. Plus, it's a good premium two drop, and it's a good blocker, and green tends to have big creatures. Uh -huh. So I can definitely see Richie's logic there on a close pick. Okay, here's his third pick. So this pack has um, I mean, Ruthless Sniper, Evolving Wilds, Agony. Yeah, those are the cards that jump out to me. Yeah, I don't. I feel like we saw all of those. No, no, the Sniper was pack two. So, so Rich takes Sniper here, mm -hmm. and that makes sense. You know, it's it's uh, probably the best card in the pack, almost certainly. Uh, it doesn't go with his first two picks, but it's pick three. You don't have colors yet. And uh, there's not really any good green or white cards. So, I mean, yeah, I like Sniper over Agony. You could consider Evolving Wilds because it's this early in the draft. Uh, if you're not going to, I think if you're not going to Evolving Wilds, you're going to take Ritha Sniper, right? Sure. That's what he does. Does he take the land here? <laughs> so I feel like the, we know that the four blue cards were in. Yeah, so now he's got Sniper. Um, Mouth to feed. And the duelist. duelist. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know. It's a pretty weak pack, as we were talking about. Like, there just wasn't a lot in these packs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he did take it. I mean, I don't hate it. I, I, I don't know if it's what I would take. I mean, he doesn't have a blue card yet, though. There's Mouth to feed, Sniper, and Duelist. Yeah, I mean, this is, like, just a bad pack, he, really. This pack was really bad. Yeah, he just didn't want any of it. So I guess, you know, the, cy the cycling land is flexible and it goes with the sniper would be Richie's logic. More likely to make his, the cut in his deck. Yeah, and you're taking a blue card. You're not taking anything away from the opponent because there's the 2-3 and the th and the initiate. Yeah. Okay, well, here's a pick. You should just take Bounty of the Luxa. It's a great card, and he's already got, like, uh, 
the blue white cycling land, the green card rare. And I think in I think this card is underrated in eight man. I think drawing two cards a turn and then having the extra ma every other turn and then having the extra mana to use on the off turn to play multiple things is more powerful than people are giving credit for, even in an aggro format. Yeah. And I also think like team drafts, as we've touched touched on are much sloppier than regular so a card like bounty can just win you the game in a team draft right where their your opponent's less likely to put huge pressure on you like they would be if i wasn't going to take bounty with what rich already has i would take evolving wilds okay here's a ruthless sniper goodness sakes yeah this is an interesting draft uh, i almost wish we had watched this one live yeah this he's got a few more interesting picks lots of interesting picks as opposed to chris just drafting one deck basically correctly i'm mm -hmm. not hating on chris just correctly drafting the one deck that he saw but Rich has had a lot of options and a lot of different directions he could go. Yeah, he certainly has. So, I mean, second sniper, but you're not seeing a ton of black, and you don't have a ton of cycling. Right. But, you know, he could put together a very nice, interesting bug deck or something with a lot of cycling and prioritized fixing from here. Uh, double sniper this early, I mean, it definitely, you know, that's strong. That yeah. pulls you in that direction. And, of course, you would take sniper here. I mean, there's nothing really even competing with it. So I imagine here it's just Dune Beetle or Floodwaters. I don't know. I don't really like Dune Beetle a lot. You know, one thing I noticed about this format uh, early on, it, the low power, high toughness creatures are really ineffective. They're so bad because of stupid exert. Right. Yeah, they never block. Like people keep talking about this format being so, so aggressive. It's somewhat aggressive. But the thing is, the exert creatures don't actually hit that hard. If you're exerting your Gust Walker to get it through every turn, you're only dealing a point and a half a turn. Yeah. The thing is... Dune Beetle can't block. Right. So it's just an unplayable card, basically. <laughs> yeah. It basically just forces them to exert rather than not, but they do that a lot of the time anyway. Right. So, like, when I'm drafting a deck in this format, I'm trying to win through card advantage and stuff. Like, a card like Wandering Death is good because it's an effective card, but a card like Dune Beetle is just an ineffective card. Yes. Doesn't do its job well. He looks like he takes Forsake the Worldly here. I, this pack just has really nothing going on, so he just takes the Cycler. Though here. this pack is horrendous, white is a, not a color that Rich should be looking to go, I don't think, at this point, so I wouldn't make that pick. I, I would take either the Dune Beetle or the Floodwaters, because if you're a double sniper deck and you're seeing blue and you're looking to play blue-black cycling, you should be taking the blue cycler, not the white cycler. Right. Essence Scatter is the next card here. This is a clear pick. Yep. Essence Scatter is a nice blue common. You'll play any number of it in any blue deck. It's a, a flexible card. If you don't have a two drop, you can pass and scatter their two. If you have two drops, you play your two drop. Same thing on turn three, turn four, turn five. Whatever turn you don't have something to drop, you leave up your scatter, and otherwise you just play all your stuff. Yep. Let's take a look at the next one here. Floodwaters, he picks up again out of a pack with not a whole lot going on. Yeah, these picks are pretty clear. I mean, it looks like some kind of bug cycling deck. Floodwaters, stinging shot. Sure. Yeah, I like both of these picks. Not much to debate. The yeah. one-mana cycler, Vizier. Sure. Illusory wrappings has been very disappointing, the whole, the whole format, I think. Yep, yeah, I agree. There's a reduced to rubble. If he wants to play a, a leak of 15 main on it. Let's, uh, let's he see. doesn't. <laughs> Spoiler alert, no. I don't know what he ends up playing, but that card is bad. And then he gets a Bontu's money. All right, so, whoa. How Bantu's lucky is Rich? He opens a Drake Haven here when he was already <laughs> leaning this direction. Well, this what is, do you think about that, man? This is a windmill slam. This is the luckiest thing I've ever seen. You are already got you already got double sniper, and you're drafting a cycling deck, and you open Drake Haven? Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> he's salty. <laughs> That's, like, not even fair. It's just unfair, yeah. So he's going to get Drake Haven, one of the best opens he can have, and really a powerful pack for him in general. where another ruthless sniper. Uh, a lay claim, which goes well in the deck as well. It cycles, but also is powerful late. And then there, he's going to get something back out of the pack as well with the Cartouche, the Scarab Feast, and even an Unburden down there. Here's the pack Chris open with the Preparative Fight. Yep. So obviously, you know, this pack isn't going to go that well for Rich. Because, it's going to go quite poorly. Yeah, man. because Chris and Rich are basically drafting the same decks. But, you know, that favors Goat Stew because in two out of the three packs, it's going to be Goat Stew getting the first pick. You know, it's funny. I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised that Chris ended up with such a decent deck knowing what we know now. It's just all he was seeing. Yeah. And, you know, this pack might not even go that bad for Rich because Rich is going to be green, blue, black, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. So, like, out of a, here he has the opportunity to get a Sheep Fit Monitor, which is a great card for a three-color deck and a cycler. But it looks like Rich is going to hate Prepare Fight just because Prepare Fight is super broken. If this was an eight-man draft, Rich would snap take the Sheep at Monitor. But given that, like, you know, you pass a prepare fight, you know, to Pakula, 
and you know, or to whoever's passing in this pack, sorry, uh, not Pakula, but whoever. I think it was Jamie. Jamie Park, whoever it is. And then, you know, they, they have that against all three of your team, you and both your teammates. And that's a really broken rare. It has two for one built all over it. It's efficient. It gains a ton of life. So, you know, this is team drafting where, like, even though the Sheafet monitor might be pretty much perfect for uh, for Hone's deck, he has to just hate Prepare Fight. Okay. It's a good pick. Let's take a look at the next one. Or we can just stare at this sweet pick forever. <laughs> I, he did take the prepare to fight out of the pack, I'm pretty sure. I think I saw that get highlighted for a second. Yeah. I mean, it is, like, an interesting spot because there is a second green card and, I mean, the Blood Rage Brawler. But honestly, prepare fight is enough better that I think, like, that's just a no-brainer. Yeah. Looks like ours is uh, frozen on our end just a little bit here so we can't actually see what the next... 